to the future of GPS. Now, forget all the GPS devices you've seen till today that point A to point B, voice directions. We're talking seriously into the future. But before we get into all of that, I'm going to show you something you never have seen before. How do you get all that map data, that electronic map that you see on your screen? Here's the secret behind the making of GPS data mapping. Finding your way using maps is not new, but making the map talk to you and guide you accurately to your destination is really what is now set to take off in a big way. A GPS device locks onto four or more of the 24 Earth orbiting satellites. It then figures out the distance to each and in doing so pinpoints its own location. Once your GPS device is connected to the satellites, it can constantly update your position and also provide speed and track information. Today your mobile phone can also double up as a GPS navigation device. And of course there are standalone devices as well like the new Delphi NAB200 offering from MapMy India. And while the GPS technology itself is quite high tech, the internal maps and the mapping process used is still what some may call the bullet car technology. The information on these maps are physically collected by the teams from the field. Each road landmark address is tracked, recorded and fed into the computer manually. receiver that we use to collect the point of interest uh, information and uh, as you drive around and you come across a point of interest um, a button is pushed in this which will capture the information one thing very important to remember when collecting data for GPS navigation device is that everything has to be collected from the field so that the user experience is good there is no shortcut about it. If you want a good navigable data guidance system for your users, then you have to send your teams out on the roads to collect the information. In India, you see that you know roads don't have names. Or uh, uh, the house numbers, they are not, it's not like to, this is house number 112, next would be 113. It's possible that it doesn't have a house number at all. So in order to make those standard softwares work with Indian, uh, Indian database, we had to, you know, uh, you know, lot of do lot of customization. The task is even more tedious as these field trips and the subsequent procedures have to be conducted frequently to update the maps. So for the GPS device to work successfully, each mall that opens or each flyover that gets constructed needs to be added, and for that the maps have to be updated constantly so that when you lose your way or take a wrong turn, you can be assured that your GPS navigator knows all the twists and turns to redirect you. Now that we've actually solved the secrets behind GPS technology, it's time to meet the man. This is Rohan Varma, the head of MapMyIndia.com. Rohan. GPS has been something we've been seeing and talking about. Finally, there is fortification here. But what's next? I mean, is this it? Just personal devices like this and a little bit on a mobile? What's going to happen? All this mapping technology you have, what are the other devices we're going to see? The devices that are coming are either standalone or your cell phone or a hybrid of the two where you have a connected device. The, there are different reasons why consumers would want it. A standalone device because it's dedicated to that purpose. Just like you know, in the MP3 players, your cell phone can play the uh, music as well. You still want a dedicated MP3 player, or you still want to take uh, pictures using your digital camera, not your cell phone. There are many reasons why you would want a dedicated standalone navigation device because it serves it serves just that purpose, and it can fit in your car. You can share it with other people. It's not your own personal device. You can share it with your family. So people will be seeing it on their standalone device. 
people will also be seeing GPS in their cell phones. In fact, they're already seeing it. Correct. In fact, the first ones that we saw in the country were all on mobile phones, standalone devices. These are the first few we see. And uh, that's because everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a need for a cell phone. So a lot of the, just like internet, where you, where a lot of the consumers saw internet first on the mobile, talking about India specifically, a lot of the times people will see GPS first on the mobile. Where because the phone has everything, it also has a GPS. They can play around with the map get navigation on your phone and so they get introduced to GPS on a mobile phone. Okay, now let's now get into a slightly more controversial territory. So what's your role? We understand that mapping is all yours. We also saw how you map it, but the hardware isn't yours, okay? So into the future, who wins this battle? The hardware manufacturers or the mapping? Because we here, maps are king. Hardware is just anybody's game. At the end of the day, it is the mapping that's local, and uh, that's where we believe our uh, USP or our importance remains. Being able to provide accurate, more detailed, more, info, info, more information to the end consumer. And the hardware becomes the means to translate that. But the hardware also, uh, also gives the experience to the end user. Is it a dedicated device? Can I connect that to my car stereo? Can I use it on my cell phone? All those things also play an important role for the consumer. So the hardware is definitely important. But, but, it's not, but, but, but you're saying you are critical, they're also playing a game somewhere, right? Oh, it's a partnership. <laughs> okay. So GPS isn't only about going from place A to place B, it's not just personalized, there's a whole lot more into the future. One of them is fleet management. This is where complete fleets of transportation vehicles can be analyzed, their speeds, where they are, why they're not moving forward at the pace they are. You can even find out if the person who's driving it is lying or telling the truth about where he is right now. Fleet management, this is maybe the solution to public transportation problems in this country. What do you get if there are not just one but many cars fitted with GPS device and these devices are connected to a single computer? Well, the computer acts like a control room and can track every single car in the fleet and get a minute by minute of the car's location. That's fleet management using GPS, something being tried out by a Chennai-based company. There are two components. One is the device component, the other one is a server component. The server component is typically uh, hosted in an enterprise environment. Our installations can go from you know, less than 1,000 rupees to uh, complex installations which can run in terms of 50,000, 40,000 rupees. So we are looking at where 100,000 units can be simultaneously connected to a server infrastructure. That I think is the perfect solution to many of our transportation problems. So all of this that is happening, can this really translate into true business for you and everybody else? Is there, I mean, you know, the big scare is it's great technology, but will it last? Will it be taken forward? Tell us a little bit about, more, more about fleet management, how you've been doing all of this, and any other things that are happening correlated to it. Yeah, fleet management uh, makes a lot of tangible business sense for companies with fleets who want to track what they're doing and see whether they're actually doing what they should be doing in the correct, efficient manner. And uh, definitely it makes a lot of business sense for us because we're the mapping company that provides the maps on which these, uh, on which these vehicles are tracked. And we provide these to different partners so that they can build their solutions on top of that. It makes a lot of business sense. There is a, there's a ground reality problem in fleet management which has to be addressed that the driver necessarily does not want to be tracked. So there's an execution risk uh, to this business. The second very interesting application of fleet management is up till now it has been centrally controlled. So the fleet management, there's a control center where you're seeing where all the drivers are and you're doing all the analysis. Imagine a situation where you have to coordinate a search and rescue operation or the police is chasing after a criminal where they, they are being tracked by the central control center to coordinate the effort, but they themselves can see where the other people are. Now let's get into fantasy land for a second, okay? All the big movies to do with science fiction and futuristic movies have this little chip, which is a GPS chip, which is, you know, put somewhere in your body and you also don't know, and, and everybody can be tracked. It's the worst nightmare, big brother, finally coming across. Is this going to happen or is it already happening? Because we hear that it's already there, embedded GPS chips. There, there